Did you know that makeup was not just a beauty accessory in ancient Egypt? It was a necessity for everyone. Yes, you heard it right. In the world of pharaohs and pyramids, makeup was not confined to the vanity boxes of the elite or the fairer sex. It was a common sight across all social strata adorning the faces of both men and women. But why, you ask? Well, it wasn't merely about aesthetics or vanity. The ancient Egyptians believed that these cosmetic concoctions offered protection from the harsh sun and lurking evil spirits. That's right, your favorite eyeliner was once considered a shield against supernatural forces. Moreover, the colors they used weren't chosen at random. Each hue held a certain symbolic meaning, adding another layer of depth to their usage. So, next time you pick up your makeup brush, remember you're not just enhancing your features, you're carrying on a tradition that's millennia old. So the next time you apply your eyeliner, remember you're following a tradition that's thousands of years old and was once considered protective. When you think of mummification, you probably picture a pharaoh. But did you know that animals were also mummified in ancient Egypt? That's right, and it wasn't just cats, but a whole menagerie of creatures, including crocodiles, baboons, birds, and bulls. The ancient Egyptians held a profound respect for these animals, seeing them as embodiments of their gods and as crucial spiritual companions for the afterlife. Take, for instance, the cat. Revered as the physical incarnation of the goddess Baste, cats were often mummified and buried with their owners. Similarly, crocodiles associated with the god Sobek were preserved in the same manner. Even bulls, symbolizing strength and virility, were not exempt from this practice. This fascinating ritual wasn't merely a display of affection for these creatures, but a profound testament to the Egyptians' beliefs and their intricate understanding of life, death, and what lies beyond. Mummified animals, just another testament to the intricate and fascinating rituals of ancient Egypt. Ever felt like time was slipping away from you? The ancient Egyptians knew that feeling all too well due to their calendar system. Imagine a year without a leap day. That was the norm in ancient Egypt. Their calendar, as advanced as it was for its time, had a glaring omission. It didn't account for leap years. This might seem like a minor detail, but it had a significant impact. Each year, the calendar fell short by about a quarter of a day compared to our solar calendar. This discrepancy might seem small, but it adds up over decades and centuries. This meant that the Egyptian seasons gradually drifted out of sync with the solar year. Imagine celebrating the harvest festival in the dead of winter or the summer solstice in the chill of autumn. This fascinating astronomical disconnect is a testament to the intricate dance between our human constructs and the celestial bodies that guide them. So even the ancient Egyptians had to grapple with time's relentless march Forget your modern dental floss, the ancient Egyptians had their own unique method of dental hygiene. Indeed, the concept of dental hygiene isn't a modern one. Our ancient Egyptian predecessors were surprisingly ahead of their time when it came to maintaining those pearly whites. They didn't have our waxed string or even toothbrushes, but they had something else. Chew sticks made from twigs. Yes, you heard that right. The Egyptians would chew on twigs not for the fun of it, but for dental hygiene. The end of these twigs would fray with use, becoming a primitive form of a toothbrush. Not only did these chew sticks freshen breath, but they also played a crucial role in dislodging food particles from between teeth. But that's not all. Some research suggests that certain types of wood, like licorice root, might have had antibacterial properties. So these chew sticks might have also helped in keeping those nasty tooth decaying bacteria at bay. Ancient Egyptian Dental Hygiene, surprisingly ahead of its time. Contrary to popular belief and Hollywood depictions, the construction of the pyramids was not the work of slaves. Historical evidence paints a different picture. It suggests that the pyramids were built by paid laborers, not bound by chains, but by the allure of compensation. These were skilled artisans, farmers, and everyday workers who traded their toil for pay. Building these colossal structures was a massive undertaking. It required meticulous planning and organization and a diverse range of skills. Architects had to design the structures with precision, while laborers had to move and assemble massive stone blocks with nothing but primitive tools. This workforce was not just a group of workers, they were a community, complete with their own housing, medical care, and a system of labor rotation. The pyramids, therefore, stand as a testament to human ingenuity and organization, rather than a symbol of forced labor.